By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at X Points. We're going to look at the finals number 37 between Dog and Nikolai. And it's quite nice. I'm liking the decks. I'm liking this final. It's a very traditional final, you could say, with like these decks that I've seen before, but they're changed, they're tweaked because the points list changes all the time as well. And of course, the players also get new insights. So it's always interesting to see the choices that they've made. We've got Dog on a mono white deck, so really your white weenie, but it was some control elements like Preacher. And he is taking on Nikolai, like I said, and he is on black and red trolls. And what I like about his list is that he's got some surprises in there. For example, Power Surge. So that is pretty cool. But before I dive into the deck text, first a word from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for 1 Trading for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue with our finals X points 37. And we are back, so we're about to witness the finals in uh, tournament number 37. Now, if you don't remember, X points is played according to a points list. So here you can see that points list, meaning if you're building your deck, you got to make sure that you don't pass the 10 points. So certain cards like land techs have points allocated to them, and you cannot spend more than 10 points. For example, if you want to play for him to Turek, you're already spending eight, meaning you don't have space for Mind Twist. Those are kind of the choices that you've got to make, usually leading to more creative brews. So um, do we have creative brews today? Well, let's take a look and find out. Let's start with the deck of Nikolai. And here we see the deck of Nikolai. So this is black and red trolls. And this is like an old time favorite, right? In uh, in X points and rightfully so, because you've got access to Set Troll, which is an incredible creature, right? One red and two for a two, two that gets a plus one, plus one bonus if you have a swamp. And with this deck, you usually do. So it's basically a three, three for three, and then you can regenerate it for one black. I mean, this is a really strong creature. And of course, when you're playing black, you also have access to the Pump Knights. And you have access to Hypnotic Spectre, that all-time classic, the 2-2 Flyer. And when it deals damage to its opponent, that opponent has to discard a card at random. And I think that at random part makes Hypnotic Spectre even better than it already is. If it would be the opponent chooses to discard a card of choice, it would still be a really good card. But now the randomness makes it like a sick card. I mean, so often have I been forced to discard like a Counterspell, for example, or, uh, you know, an answer to the Hypnotic Spectre. But yeah, it's random, so you don't have any influence on it. Um, and then when we're looking at the rest of the deck, we also see that traditional burn, right? We see four lightning bolts, four chain lightnings, and we also see disintegrates, pyrotechnics. So, I mean, this is a deck that only has to deal so much damage with the creatures. You know, it's actually quite limited, and it can kind of finish uh, the game off with the bolts and the chain lightnings. And then there's an extra weapon in this deck and that is called Power Surge. So Power Surge is an enchantment for two red that works a little bit complicated, but basically what it comes down to is that at the end of your turn for each untapped land that your opponent has when they take the turn, so the land's not tapped, they take a damage. So for example, if they have four lands untapped, they will take four damage. Now, in other formats without mana burn, you can simply negate this by saying, I'm just going to tap my lands. I'm not going to do anything with the mana, whatever. But remember, we are, we are playing according to the Atlantic rule set. So we have mana burn here. So you cannot say, I'm just going to tap out at, in your end step and then it's no problem at all. I don't take any damage. Now, a note here to make though is that power search works for the opponent, but also on yourself. So that means you got to think about how can I, you know, use all the mana every time that all my lands are tapped and I don't take basically kill myself with my own power surges. Now you can see that Nikolai has thought about that as well. There are a few cards that are really good with uh, with that strategy because he's playing with Mishra's Factory. I think that's probably the best card of the bunch. Mishra's Factory, for one, you can make it into an, uh, an assembly worker. The cool thing is you can do that as often as you want. So you can make it five times into an assembly worker, 10 times into an assembly worker. So Mishra's Factory is your perfect mana sink. It doesn't get much better 
Demisher's Factory, and he's playing with the full playset. Now, we also have Setch Troll. Setch Troll, you can regenerate for one black. You can put as many regeneration shields as they currently are called, I believe, in Modern Magic. You can put as many regeneration shields on your Setch as you want. So, again, it's a great way to use that that's a black mana that you have too much of and then you've got your granite gargoyle the 2-2 flyer again you can pump it up for one red give it plus oh plus one again you know it's a great mana sink for your red sources so you've got red sources black sources covered if you don't have your factory and then of course you also has, have the pop knights that you can use mana for we even see vampire bets two of in this deck that you can use to kind of pump your mana in of course vampire bets you cannot use more than two black i always like I regret that a little bit that they made that design. I feel the card would have been much cooler and, and much more interesting if they would have made it uh, equal to like a Dragon Whelp, right? That it has that self-destruct where you could say, for example, for each black mana spent after the first two, uh, you know, Vampire Bets is destroyed at the end of the turn. I think that would be really sweet, you know, from a design perspective. But okay, they didn't do that. It's just an 0-1 that you can make a 2-1 for two black you know, not not that strong, but I kind of like it in this deck. And again, he's playing with so much direct damage and the power surge strategy that you don't really need to do that much damage with your creatures. And also power surge is a card you can kind of use as direct damage. If you see that your opponent is passing the turn to you with a lot of lands untapped, you can simply play your power surge, pass the turn over to him. And then if he doesn't have a mana sink, he's probably going to take a lot of damage. And that could actually be your finisher, you know? So power surge... Don't underestimate the card. It is a good, it's really a good card. Anyway, this is the deck of Nikolai. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Doug. So this is White Weenie, right? As we know it, the traditional White Weenie. And I always love to see it. You know, I remember this from back in the day. You know, people used to play this quite a lot. And it's nice to see that in X-Point, it's a very competitive deck. So it's really good to see. So we've got uh, a lot of one drops, right? Savannah Lions, Acacian Javelineers. We've got the Thunder Wolves. It's all one drops. Then on that second row, we've got our two drops. With uh, We've got our, our Pegasus, right? We've got the Order of the Evan Hand. We've got the White Knights. So that's all two. Of course, Chaos Orbs also two. Then we see the Crusades. It's going to pump your entire army. So it's pretty like straightforward. What I really like in these decks where you also play with a lot of first strike ability is the Army of Allah because it's an instant spell. Gives everything plus two plus oh. You know, that can be huge. That can be a game changer that can be your winning card you know that can be like the bottleneck the kill moment and of course we have that traditional combo with armageddon together with lantex now remember this again are cards that are pretty heavily pointed especially the lantex like if you would like to pay uh, play with four lantex it means you're eight points in right really tough to go heavy on lantex is now in the x points so i think this inclusion of one tax i think it's kind of nice also because then you've got points left for your uh, Mishra's factories, who I think in this aggressive strategy are quite good. And I also like that Maze of If. Maze of If is really a card that's even better when you're on offense, trust me. Because if you have, let's say, three creatures, right? They're all small. Your opponent has one set troll to block. You know, Nikolai is playing with the Sedges, so I'm just using that as an example. And you attack with your Thunderwolf, your Savannah Lions, and your White Knight, whatever. He's probably gonna, gonna block your White Knight, right? then your White Knight would die to the Setch, but not with the Maze. You can take it out of combat, it untaps, deals no damage, and your Savannah line and your Tundra Wolves, they still deal damage. So it's still going to take three damage, and you still get to keep all your creatures. So Maze is just a really good card when you are on the offense. Uh, and then, of course, we also see two Armageddons, Armageddon Lantex, traditional combo in general i would say white weenie armageddon is good because you want to just flood the board with your creatures they're very cheap to cast you don't need a lot of mana and then when it's turn four and you have enough mana cast it armageddon destroy all the lands you're kind of resetting your opponent as well you know he needs more time but your creatures are really cheap so if you then draw into one or two planes or maybe they're in your hand already you can start deploying your threats again and your opponent simply cannot keep up so this is a very like old school strategy I like it. And then in the sideboard, which is, I think, important to note for this matchup that we see uh, two COP Reds, which I think could be quite useful. And also the Spirit Link. I think Spirit Link lately, I've been getting more excited about that card because there are so many decks that play with a lot of direct damage and really count on that direct damage to do, to do its work. And then if you have a little bit of life gain, like with Spirit Link, that can change things around. Another card that kind of does that is Diamond Valley, for example. Those are cards that are really quite handy. Um, there is no Diamond Valley in here. 
kind of makes sense. Then again, we also see two preachers, so you could use those preachers. That's kind of the top end, by the way, here of the deck of uh, Doug. So it's nice to see the preachers. It's it's interesting. It's four to cast. Like you could also choose to go for Sarah Angel, for example, for five is your top end, uh, or for Thunder Spirit. But he's chosen to go for uh, for preacher, and I think preacher, if you don't have an answer to it, is going to be a very annoying card. I do think in this matchup, it's going to be quite tough for Doug because there are four chain lightnings. There are four uh, lightning bolts. You know, there are just so many answers. Nikolai has so much removal against this deck. It's it's going to be really tough before sideboarding. Maybe after sideboarding with like the COP Reds and the Blacksmiths and the Spirit Link. You know, he can, he can change that around a little bit. But it's, uh, it's going to be hard. Anyway, this is the deck of Duck. We looked at the deck of Nikolai. That only means one thing. We are ready for finals 37 of X-Points. Game number one of X-Points, final 37, and Doug here on the play. He's playing a mono white, so white weenie, and he's taking on Nikolai, and Nikolai is playing uh, black red trolls. So a uh, pretty aggressive strategies. I guess Nikolai's strategy is, is more with like the burn, you know, he's got a lot of burn in his deck, like four chains, four bolts, disintegrates, all that stuff. And Doug really has to mainly deal damage through combat, so he really relies on his creatures. Probably gonna attack here with the occasion javelineers. One would assume so. And then the question is what is going to be his follow-up play? Are we gonna see, for example, a second planes and then maybe an order of light burr or a crusade? We'll just have to wait and see. It looks like uh, the players are discussing something. Now we don't have audio, so we don't know. There's the attack for one. So that will mean Nikolai here dropping to 19. We can see uh the live totals on the screen of Duck. And ooh, there's a White Knight. That's a nice follow up. So next turn, he could potentially attack for three. He could put Nikolai on 16. And I wonder if Nikolai, if he finds a land, which I'm sure he has, if he's going to activate his, uh, his Mishra's Factory to potentially block. There's the land. So it's a mountain. Tapping two here. What's he going to do for two? Ooh, there's a uh, Fowler Stone. So actually, I think if you're Duck, you're kind of happy with this. You're like, okay. I get another attack, at least deal three more points of damage. For Doug, this is really a sprint. Like, he wants to kill Nikolai as fast as possible. And Nikolai has the stronger creatures on the long run. Like, his Satch Troll is really good, I think, in this matchup. Of course, Doug does have uh, Swords to Plowshares. Ooh, here we see a Crusade. So that means he can now swing in for five. Like, this Crusade is quite good. And there's the attack by Doug. So he's going to swing in for five. Would put Nikolai here on 14, exactly. Are we going to see a follow-up uh, creature here in second uh, main? There's a Plains. Tundra Wolves would be an option, for example, or Savannah Lines. Nope, nothing. Okay, so that's good news for Nikolai again. I mean, he's on 14, but he does need to play something here to block. Okay, there's a Satch. That is really good. So Satch now at 3-3 because of that Swamp. And also, for one, uh, Black, he can regenerate it. So, yeah, this is... Really tough here for Doug. Let's see if he can find an answer here to the uh, to the Setch. I mean, a Swords would be ideal. And I think if you play X points, like you have to have an answer to Setch trolls if you don't play them yourself, because you're going to see them so often. It's just something you have to. Uh, to keep in the back of your mind. And there are some solutions to it, like Swords, of course, for White is uh, by far the best answer to a Sedge. The question is, does Doug have it? Can he play it out? Look at this, just attacking with the White Knight, so I guess he doesn't. So Nikolai can now block regenerate it here. Probably what he's uh, exactly... He's gonna... Yep, there he goes, tapping the Swamp for a moment there. I thought he wasn't going to. But that wouldn't make any sense, of course. So Satcher tapped. Duck tapping two planes. What is he going to cast for two planes? An order, perhaps. Another white knight. Maybe another crusade. Okay, tapping three. Okay, there is the preacher. The card from the dark. That's quite good. There's a lot of glare here, but we know it's preacher. So what preacher does, you can tap it, and then your opponent has to give you one of his creatures. So this could uh, could get quite interesting. I think if you're Nikolai, you would love to kind of play a creature that's not really 
you know, that impressive that you can just give away to Doug. For example, Vampire Bets would be quite good. But do remember, Nikolai plays with, you know, like I said, a lot of burn, four bolts, four chains. You can just fire that off here on the, uh, on the Preacher. Then again, if he would have had those cards, he probably would have played it on the White Knight earlier in the game. So it's going to be an interesting moment here. Can he find some kind of answer? Going to tap three, it seems. Perhaps another Sedge. Okay, so there's another. I'm not quite sure what card this is. There we see the Vampire Bats. Okay, so he can give the Vampire Bats away. So it's an artifact for sure, the card he just played. We'll just have to keep an eye on what it actually does. It was three to cast, so it could be a Disrupting Scepter, for example. But we'll just have to wait and see. So the Vampire Bats are there. So that's perfect for Nikolai. So if Doug decides to use his Preacher here, then Nikolai can simply say, okay, here you go. Here you have my 0-1 Flyer. And look at it, he is using it. Ooh, changing his mind. He's like, oh no, you got the Vampire Bats. If he can find a way, though, to kill the Bats and then use the Preacher, he gets the Sedge. So for Doug, this is, uh, could be an interesting moment. He is going to use the Preacher. So I'm expecting Nikolai here to give the uh, Vampire Bats. And I mean, you know, it's it's still an annoying card for Nikolai. Exactly, he's going to pass here over the, the Vampire Bats. I mean, you still lose a creature. It's not ideal. But it's way better than giving your Sedge. One of the things, by the way, that Doug could have done was use his Acacian Javelineers to kill the Vampire Bats and then use the Preacher to get a hold of the Sedge and then attack for three with the White Knight. I think that would have been an interesting line as well. And it looks like he is going to attack here. Forcing uh, Nikolai to use that Swamp to regenerate. Which he can. I mean, he's got the Badlands was untapped, so that's no problem for him. And I still think it's a good play for Doug to maybe on end step. There's another Preacher. Okay, he had another Preacher in hand. So he can use that. And I still wonder what that artifact is on the side of Nikolai. So if it's a Disrupting Scepter, we're going to find out soon enough. There's another Swamp. Yeah, it's a Disrupting Scepter. I guess going to use it now. So forcing Doug to discard a card. Discarding a Pegasus. Okay, that actually... It's quite good, you know, because it's a flyer. It flies over the Sedge. It would be a 2-2 with that Crusade. So, yeah, the Disrupting Scepter really showing its value here for, uh, for Nikolai. So two cards in, uh, in hand for him, it seems, and two cards in hand for Doug. And this is, it's looking tough for Nikolai, because next turn, you know, Doug can, can use the Preacher, can steal the Sedge. So it's, it's difficult. So Nikolai it seems to be really in the tank here, trying to think, do I really want to pass the turn? But I guess you have to eventually, exactly passing the turn here to Doug. He's untapping three cards in hand now after the draw. So he can use his Preacher. Get control of the, uh, of the Sedge, I guess. And he is uh, animating the factory, so he wants to gift the factory. And I believe that according to the rules, correct me if I'm wrong, you have to activate that before he activates the Preacher. Because you cannot respond anymore when that Preacher ability is, uh, is on the stack. That's what I remember. We've had this discussion a lot, actually, Preacher and Mishra's Factory and how that works. But anyway, if both players agree on this, then I guess it's fine as well. It's still bad news for Nikolai, of course. He's going to lose some, uh, another card. And I think for Doug, you know, I would really now consider using the Javelineers on the Vampire Bats so you can untap that other Preacher 
and you know, and now get hold of this edge, and, and you can start attacking again and dealing some damage. I also wonder what those other two cards are in the hand of uh, of Doug, because remember he chose to discard the Pegasus, which seems really good on this board. So I wonder what other cards he has in hand. I assume they're better than the Pegasus. So really curious about those. Looks like he's first going to attack again with the White Knight. There he goes into the red zone. And again, that block, of course, by the Sedge. Now he's going to tap one. Another Ecation Javelin here. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? Oh, he had another Pegasus. So that's why he put the Pegasus away, knowing he could have the double spell, Ecation Javelin here and Mesa Pegasus. So that kind of makes sense. There's the pass. There's another Swamp here by Nikolai. Probably going to use the Scepter again. And I'm kind of expecting Duck here to just have a land. Oh, it's the Army of Allah. Ooh, I have to say the Disrupting Scepter is doing work. It is really good here in this matchup. Okay, there's an Order. Now remember, it does have a uh, protection from Black, the Order of the Eb uh, White, I mean, the Order of the Ebon Hand. So it's really good in this match. Yeah, and here we go. Now he's going to kill the Vampire Bats. Yeah, this is a really good decision. Now, on tap, forcing Nikolai to choose uh, what to give you. And then he's forced to give you the Setch Troll, I believe. So he's going to untap. Draw for turn. Using the Preacher. And there he goes. going to give the order. Of the Ebon Hand. And again, this is another rule scenario where I'm not quite sure how this works. Of course, Nikolai chooses. So I guess that's why the protection from white doesn't work and you can still choose to give the order of, uh, of the Ebon Hand. And now let's see what Doug is going to do here for his combat step. So we have that one Sedge. It looks like he wants to perhaps ban this. Okay, attacking in a band here, I guess. 4-4 four, four banding. There's the 3-3 three, three White Knight now. Remember that Crusade, of course, is still in play, buffing the entire army here of Doug. And he's animating the factory. Yeah, that makes sense. Of course, swing in with the factory. I mean, if Nikolai blocks, fine. You know, kill the factory. I can untap my preacher, steal your Sedge. That's what I want anyway. So he's probably not going to do that. I guess he's going to block... The band here. And I mean, it's cool to see banding and all, but I think in this case, it would have been better to just attack with the Pegasus, deal two, right? And then Nikolai, I guess Nikolai would have blocked the White Knight, so you do get some extra damage in doing it this way. Here we see another card, too much glare, unfortunately, to see it. It's one white to cast, so it could be a Savannah Lions, but it's black bordered, so I think it's a Tundra Wolves, I think. We'll have to wait and see. But first, let's see what Nikolai can do. And I mean, what I like here about Duck's position at the moment is, you know, he's got the 2-2 flyer. You know, he can do work with that. And he's got his 2-2 his factory worker that Nikolai doesn't want to block. So that's four damage alone. Look at him untap here. Is he untapping the Preacher? Or is it just a mistake? I think he wants to keep it tapped. He was just untapping the factory. So, I mean, you can just animate factory attack with Pegasus, right? You would deal four. That seems fine to me. It would be nice to also see what that other card is next to the Javelineers with all the glare on it. I think if it's a Thunder Wolves, it is just a 2 2 first striker and it doesn't really work i mean you could consider banning it with the pegasus again but then you would lose another creature again i mean i think it would just attack her with the flyer animate the factory and you know deal four i mean four is quite a lot i mean look at the life total of nikolai by the way he's already on on nine here a little bit confused about the preacher not quite sure. Is he now always attacking with everything? And I wonder if he's now banning the factory with the Pegasus. That would make sense, actually. Because then if you're Nikolai and you're Doug is going to put all the damage on the factory. 
What Nikolai really needs here is a lightning bolt. Like a well-placed lightning bolt can make a, a big change here for this combat step. So he's attacking with the Order of the Ebon Hand, of course, as well. I mean, that's, that's really good, you know. Nikolai is in a really tough spot here. He's on 9. He could choose to just block the White Knight, but then he would take 4 damage. Okay, there's a Bolt. So I guess this is something he wants to do before combat, that that's why Doug's untapping. So now he gets the Order back. I mean, that changes a lot because it's got protection from White. In that case, if I was Doug, I would just attack with the Pegasus and with the 2-2 Factory. I mean, you know, if he blocks the Factory, fine, it dies and you can use your Preacher again. And the, the, the Pegasus he cannot block, so he's going to take 2 regardless. He would drop to 7, which is really low. Looks like he's... Is he going to tap for a damage? Tapping for a... Yeah, the Order, of course, has protection from white. So that's not going to work. So Nikolai... Or, or Doug, I mean, still having just a one card in hand. I believe Nikolai has no cards in hand, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I th like I said, I think if, if I was Doug, I would just attack with the factory, attack with the Pegasus. You know, and you would, you would probably put him on 5 here, which is not too bad. So there's the attack. Also attacking here with the White Knight. Probably we're going to see the White Knight being blocked by the Sedge. So let's see what Nikolai is going to do. Maybe he's got another trick up his sleeve, but I believe he's got no more cards in hand, but we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, Nikolai here just blocking the White Knight. Probably just going to regenerate it as well, of course. Yeah, he's got more enough swamps, so just going to take four. But I mean, four, it's still, he's on, he's going to drop to five. It's a problem. Remember, a duck still has that one counter on the Javelineers. So basically, he's not on 5, but he's on 4. That is a problem. Okay, so that is a Tundra Wolves there. So one of the things that duck could do, can do next turn is on end step, on the end of Nikolai's turn, deal that one damage, put Nikolai on 4, and then go all in with an attack. So Nikolai really needs a good card here. Needs another Setch, for example, or some good removal. If he just passes the turn, it's probably uh, the end here in game one for Nikolai. And remember, we are playing in a final. The winner is going to win X points 37. Okay, there's an Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, that's something. It's also a flyer. It can stop the Pegasus. So making it difficult here for Doug. Doug is going to tap 2. Does he have a disenchant in hand perhaps for the uh, Disrupting Scepter? Yeah, there's a disenchant here on the Scepter. It, again, it's so interesting with Preacher because I'm thinking, right, isn't there a way where you could have maybe disenchanted your own factory, then untap Preacher, steal another creature from Nikolai? I'm just, I'm just thinking, like, is there somehow, like, more to gain? Ooh, there's an Armageddon. So he's now also tapping, of course, his Mishra's Factory just for mana, which I think is a great, I mean, this is great. You know, you're going to kill your, your own Factory, which is Nikolai's Factory, you know. Um, so you can untap your Preacher next turn. Like, I think this Armageddon is a winning Armageddon. And I wonder now if he's going to attack with the 2-2 Pegasus offering a trade on Nikolai. I mean, that could be an option as well. And remember, the Felwer Stone doesn't tap for anything because there's no land on the side of Doug. 
So Flower Stone can copy any mana that your opponent can produce, any land mana produced by land that your opponent can produce, colored mana that is. And if your opponent doesn't have that, then then the Flower Stone is doing nothing. So he's thinking about attacking in a band. I wouldn't do that because there is a regeneration shield still on the Sedge. So I think you've got basically two good options here. That is attacking with the Pegasus, just like that, offering a trade. Or not attacking at all. I guess another option could be, of course, have the White Knight as well. That he can, he can only block the White Knight on the Sedge, of course. So that is true. That is a good point. And I think we're seeing him now blocking the, the band here on the uh, order of the Ebon Hand, which has protection from white, so it's not going to die from that block. That is actually a really good block from Nikolai, yeah, so this is not really helping. Okay, and this surprises me a little bit, because one of the things Nikolai could have done, but maybe I'm mistaken something, is put one damage on Pegasus, one damage on Tundra Wolves, and both of his creatures would have survived, so I'm a little bit surprised by this moment here in combat. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me know in the comments if, if I am. But next turn is looking really good for Duck, despite the fact that he lost a creature that wasn't really necessary, in my opinion. He can untap the Preacher, use it again, forcing Nikolai to give one of his creatures away, and he really doesn't want to. Remember, by the way, that the Setch Troll is now a 2-2 again, because there are no Swamps in play, so it's just a 2-2, and he doesn't have Black Mana to regenerate it. So that creature is all of a sudden looking very weak. So I actually think that Nikolai is probably going to give the set stroll to Doug. That's what I expect him to do. I mean, you want to keep the, the, the order of, uh, of the Ebon Hand for sure, because it's got protection from white. So Doug, you're drawing another card. Of course, he's going to use a Preacher here. So we're going to see what Nikolai is going to do. This is a very interesting... First game, so yeah, he's going to give the Sedge. I mean, that's going to be great to attack with the next turn as well, you know, especially if Nikolai cannot find black mana. If he can find black, that would be good, because then he can give the order of, uh, of the Ebon Hand first strike with one black, and he could kill the Sedge if the Sedge attacks. Then again, do you want to do that? Because then the Preacher untaps and he steals another creature. Preacher is just a creature you want to deal with straight away. It's such a nuisance. There's a maze. Oh, this maze is also quite interesting. It means you can just attack with everything and whatever unfavorable block you have, you can take it out of the equation with your maze of if. I mean, this changes a lot. I would now attack with White Knight, Acacian Javelin here, and Pegasus all separately. Exactly turn them sideways, go in there. Nikolai, of course, is going to block, you know, one of the white creatures. Probably the Javelineers, that's his only option. Going to offer the trade maybe for the Pegasus. If he does, it would mean he would drop to two. We see Doug here using the May. So he's got to choose. Am I going to save my Pegasus or my Javelineers? I would definitely go for the Javelineers here because you can trade the Hippie exactly for your Pegasus, which is fine. And you still want to keep that one damage. He's going to drop to two with the Javelineers. It can ping him. He's going down to one. I mean, Nikolai needs something here, like a red mana, you know, to, to play a bolt, perhaps. Even then, it's going to be tough. Nope, that's it. Game number one going to Doug. And it was such a thriller of a first game. It makes me really looking forward to the rest of this matchup. This is, this is great. Thank you, guys. Amazing. Anyway, they're going to dive into their sideboards, and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game uh, number two, here we go. So it's Nikolai on the play, which I think makes a big difference, right? I mean, White Weenie on the play is a lot better than on the draw. We do see a turn one play by Doug, by the way, which is exactly what he wants to do. Savannah lines here. Passing the turn back to Nikolai. So let's see if Nikolai can find some more bolts and chains. Only could find one in that first game. I think that also makes a, a big difference here. Passing the turn back here to Doug. Having a Swamp and a Badlands there for him. So Doug could attack you for two. Deal the first damage of this uh, second game. There he goes. 
And what are we going to see? A terror card coming in from the sideboard, probably. Going to kill here the lion. There's a second plane, stabbing two. Are we going to see a white knight? Ooh, there's the uh, the blacksmith. A card from Arabian Nights. It is protection from red. So that makes it quite good against bolts. Doesn't have protection from black, so you can still play the terror on it, but you cannot bolt it. And of course, you cannot block it with the sedge. There's an hypnotic specter, 2-2 two -two flyer. That could be quite dangerous for, uh, for Doug. Needs an answer for that. Especially when you're playing White Weenie, you don't want to start discarding cards. There's not a lot of card draw in uh, both of these decks, by the way. Tapping a White. Oh, there's a Sword Supply Shares. Perfect answer here. Taking care of business. Didn't see a single Swords, by the way, in, uh, in game one. There's the attack. I guess it's got one power, I think. It's a 1-2, I believe. So it's going to drop here to 21. There's a Mishra's Factory. That's actually quite a nice follow-up. Can he now also play out another creature? Oh, he's going to take it back here. Going to play a Strip Mine instead. Going to strip the Badlands. There's another Savannah Lines passing the turn. Three cards in hand for Doug. So Nikolai here on two lands. The thing for Nikolai is though, he would, pre he would prefer to play the Sedge, of course, in turn four. So you have a, a regeneration mana open. Then again, I think when you're playing against white, it doesn't really matter because you're facing a Swords to Plowshares anyway, you know? You don't have to worry about a Bolt or any other, like, or, or, or a Terror or something. Like you are actually with Terror, you cannot regenerate anyway because it buries. So, um, yeah, I, I, my point is you can just play out the Sedge for three when you're playing against White Weenie. Anyway, we don't see a Sedge. We see a Granite Gargoyle instead. There's the attack here. And now that uh, protection from red kind of matters, I think if I would have been Doug, I would have also attacked her with the line because Nikolai doesn't have to... Oh, he's got the Preacher who wants to steal it. Okay, I said nothing. <laughs> my point was he doesn't have the mana to like buff the toughness, but because of the Preacher, it makes sense. Ooh, there's a Bolt though. A bolt on the preacher. That's a good answer from Nikolai. Tapping two black. And remember, Nikolai is fighting for his life here. He needs to stay in there. This is a great card for him. Order of Light Burr. Sorry, Order of the Ebon Hand. I keep messing that, those up. I'm sorry for that. But uh, Order of the Ebon Hand. And it has protection from white. That makes it so good in this match. Now, one of the things that Doug can do, of course, is activate his Mishra's Factory. Kind of offering a trade here because Nikolai doesn't have the mana to to give his order first strike or to give uh, exactly there's the attack. He can actually make it three now. Oh, look at that attacking with both. Bumping it here to a three three. I think if you're Nikolai, exactly, you're gonna block the uh, the blacksmith and gonna take three here from the uh, factory. Oh, look at that! It's just gonna die here. I mean, this is, this is a strange attack, isn't it, by Doug? Maybe he made a mistake. Maybe he forgot about the, the toughness being two or that the order has protection from white. Or maybe there's a deeper plan behind it, but I can't really think of one. There could be scenarios where you have a balance and you want your creature to die, but don't believe so in this case. Anyway, there's the attack with the gargoyle flying over the lion. So Doug, you're taking two, dropping to 18. There's a tap of two black. There's a Felwer Stone. Ooh, there's a Strip. That Strip is quite good because it can take care of one of the factories. You actually don't have to do that now. You can just wait for combat, but he is deciding to do it now. Perhaps he's worried about a potential Armageddon. That could be a reason to use the Strip in your own main, but... Yeah, if you're, if you're afraid, I guess, I mean, if, if you strip the factory later, they can still pump each other or something. So there's something to say for doing it main. Then again, you can just wait till the attack step. Anyway, there's a planes here by Doug. Gonna tapping two whites. There's the order of light burst, so the white pump knight. So this one has protection from black. 
And I mean, there's not really a good attack here for Duck because uh, Nikolai had a black mana open to give that uh, his order first strike. And Nikolai here playing another mana. I think if Nikolai can, can find enough swamps, I think he does now, actually. He can attack with the order. Ooh, he's going to tap four instead. Oh, flash fires from the sideboard. Devastating here for Doug. This is a killer of a move. Now Nikolai is in a winning position because of this flash fires. Are we going to have a 1-1? I mean, we're not there yet. Duck's still on 18, but he needs to find some new planes. That flesh fire was brutal. Two cards in hand for him. Passing the turn back here to Nikolai. Nikolai tapping three. Okay, there's the uh, Disrupting Scepter again. I mean, that's really good, Disrupting Scepter after the flesh fires, by the way. But luckily for Doug, he's finding a planes. Does he have a disenchant, perhaps? Would be worth it. You don't want to lose a card to the scepter next turn. So two cards in hand for him, but it looks like he's just going to pass. Okay, going to pick up his hand again. Passing. Oh, that's got to be painful for Doug. Knowing that Nikolai's probably going to use the scepter here. Another thing he could do is attack with the... Uh, Order of the Ebon Hand, exactly, because he's got the black mana to give it first strike, and for two bl black you can give it plus one, plus O. Oh. So if Duck chooses to put his uh, factory in front of the order, Nikolai can actually kill it with first strike damage. Yeah, it cannot block it because it has protection from white. So that is not going to work. So you will just have to take the damage here. Or, of course, put his factory in front of it. But I don't think that's a really good option for now. He's still on a pretty high life total. Exactly. I would just take the damage. And now he's going to use his uh, Scepter, Nikolai, in his second main. What is he going to lose here? If anything. Has that planes, thinking about doing something. The thing is with Scepter, that's why the card, I mean, it's good, but it's not that good because you can choose. So Duck could make a choice what he wants to discard. It's not like Hypnotic Spectre where you have a random discard. That's one of the things that makes Hypnotic Spectre so good. So two cards in handy for Duck. There's a Swords to Plowshares. Who's going to discard the Swords to Plowshares? I wonder what the other card is. Could it be a Preacher? They're just like, okay, Preacher can kind of save me out of this. If I could just draw a new second land and play Preacher. That's a big risk. Oh, there's another land. Tapping two. It's another Order. Of course, Order also really good in this matchup. The problem here for Doug is that uh, Granite Gargoyle. Because Nikolai now has enough mana to also pump the toughness, making it really difficult to deal with that gargoyle. I mean, one of the things he could have done, but it's maybe easy from my position, is, you know, play the swords on the, um, on the gargoyle and just say, you know what, I'm going to discard this order despite the fact that it's amazing in this matchup. But then at least he had an attack lined up. Here's the attack. Doug here dropping to 14. Nikolai still on 17. He's going to tap 3. There's a Setch. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, it's looking worse and worse and worse for Doug. I think the only good news for him in game 2 is that he won game number 1, meaning it is going to be a 1-1. Because, I mean, it's just it's not looking good for him. He needs to really find a draws here. If, if this would have been a Preacher, for example, that's one of those cards that can kind of get you out of a sticky situation. But I mean, the Sedge is just an extra lock on the door that was already closed. It's going to be really tough for him. And of course, he's taking his time. This is the finals. You want to make the right decision. Playing out the Tundra Wolves here, which is just a 1-1 first striker. It's not going to cut the cake. 
Nikolai has another attack here lined up. Exactly. Could even consider using his pump uh, ability here. Dealing an extra point of damage. Decides not to. So that's uh, 12 life here for Doug. There's the Sedge. And yeah, this makes sense. If you have the Sedge in hand, you'd rather play out the Sedge. Keep the two black open for regeneration. Tapping two white. Okay, there's a Crusade. Normally a great card, but... Again, not ideal, and it would be really helpful for Nikolai if he still would have more planes, so he could kind of pump those knights, give it first strike, but then still, you know, it's still not ideal for Doug, because Nikolai has those uh, regenerating uh, set trolls. Make it really hard to kind of push through. There's the attack with the order, and I think he has to take the damage again. At a certain point, he will be forced to start jumping with the factory, but you don't want to do that Unless you're really, really, like, it's, it's, your, it's your final chance, basically. Tapping two here. What are we going to see for two? Another Felwer Stone. So, yeah, consideration here could have been to maybe make it a 3-1, you know. Use two swamps. You would still have one swamp open to regenerate one of the Setches. But I mean, this works as well, of course. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the better play. I'm not saying that, but it could be a consideration. Doug, you're on 10, taking his turn. Needs to find something. A card that would be really good, but I'm not sure if it's in the sideboard. I don't think so, but would be like a Wrath of God. Obviously, then it would need, need an extra land as well, but with Wrath, you cannot regenerate, so that would really be a solution. There's the blacksmith, by the way, which is which is pretty good because it's got uh, protection from red. So if Nikolai decides to attack you with the pump knight, then at least duck and attack next turn with his blacksmith, deal two damage as well. But I think if you're Nikolai, look at exactly look at the life totals. Just attack here. You know, deal two more points of damage, put him on eight. Could still consider making it three. Would put him on seven. Yeah, he's going to pump it up now. Because I do, I do agree here with Nikolai's play. I think, oh, he's got another black. Okay, but even if he didn't, I think one black to regenerate would kind of be okay. Then again, I mean, Doc does have, of course, a lot of creatures there. And they're all pumped by the Crusade as well. But yeah, it's, it's tough. But Nikolai's pretty high up still. So Doug on seven. So next turn will probably drop to four. Now remember, of course, Nikolai, I'm now realizing that his granite gargoyle is flying. Ooh, a second crusade. Does that change anything? I think we can see a really nice last alpha strike from Doug at least. I wonder if this changes anything. I mean, the problem is that those set just regenerate. But now you can attack with the Tundra Wolves and the Savannah Lines. You don't have to worry that anything dies. Oh, and of course, your Blacksmith hits for three. I mean, if Doug can now, for example, find a Spirit Link, gain some life, he could actually get back into this. It's a stretch, though. He's got a Spirit Link in the side. Look at this Nikolai going all in here. Two Sedges. Granite Gargoyle, which is unblockable because it is flying. And the order, which is also unblockable. He could pump the order twice, make it four damage, deal two more damage with the uh, gargoyle. Ooh, then he just misses one point of damage, I believe. This is really interesting. So the Setch is attacking you there. Three each, three threes. So that's quite tough here. Like, Doc can block one of the Thunder Wolves because of first strike damage. So then the Thunder will survive. Probably has to throw exactly the lines in front of the bus. That's what I would do. Sack the lines. You just have to or else you die. Block one on the Thunder Wolves. And then take four damage from the uh, Order and from the Gargoyle. Probably going to pump, of course. Yeah, it is flying. Cannot block it. Yeah, now he's going to pump it. So it's going to go to four. I think he's going to take six. Oh, there's a chain lightning. Okay, that's it. <laughs> For a moment there, I thought maybe Nikolai miscalculated, you know, I'm going to put him on one and then like, oh, oh no. 
you know, but that didn't happen. Uh, I guess Nikolai is in the finals, of course, for a reason. Playing the chain, winning game number two. That means it is a 1-1. One, one. Uno, uno. And that means we are going to go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. So the decider, that's exciting. Doug on the play. So, I mean, it's a little plus for him, of course. White weenie on the play, a lot better than on the draw. So starts here with the line, turn one. Passing good turn by Nikolai. So no red mana. So probably just going to dive in here for two. No worries about a bolt. So Nikolai here dropping to 18. Can Doug find some more pressure? There's the second plane. So are we going to see another creature? Another lion's. Ooh, look at all those one drops and the Tundra Wolves. 1-1 one, one first striker from Legends hitting the board. Three creatures. Ooh, no red mana for Nikolai. I'm a little worried here. At least you've got the factory. You could animate the factory to block the wolves. I think if Doug attacks with the wolves, he's kind of signaling a disenchant. So it's going to be an interesting combat step here. Of course, Nikolai can also just decide to take that one extra point of damage for now. There's the attack. Everything in. Is there a terror? Yep, there's a terror. Okay, that's quite good. The terrors are really doing work here for, uh, for Nikolai. That means he only takes three instead of five, so he's on 15. Tapping two, more pressure here. There's a Pegasus. So the Mesa Pegasus, a 1-1 one -one flyer with banding. Ooh, there's a red mana. What's that from the top? This is quite good for Nikolai. Could mean that he can start playing his direct damage. Passing the turn though, and I mean Bolt of course is an instant, so you don't have to play it in your main. There's again the attack, also with the Wolves. So I really think that he's got a disenchant in hand here. Let's see if Nikolai can fire off a Lightning Bolt. If not, he's looking at four more damage, we'll drop to 11. Ooh, another Terror, of course that works too. Maybe even better. Taking care of the line, gonna take two damage, dropping to 13. And I think the good news for Nikolai here is that Duck hasn't found a Crusade yet. I mean, Crusade really adds up in these type of decks. There's another line, Savannah line number three hitting the board. But no more land drops and a pass. So, I mean, this could be worse for Nikolai. Just that one Savannah line. He's already taken care of two, so why not take care of three? And if Nikolai can now, for example, find a Swamp, he could cast a Sextral, have regeneration mana open as well. He's going to tap two here, it seems. There's a Felwer Stone. Ooh, missing the land drop. This is not great for Nikolai. If you're Doug, you're happy. But if you're in Team Nikolai, you're not. This is not the type of play you want to see. Game three, the decider. Doug can now swing in. With four, he would put... Nikolai on nine, and if Nikolai has an answer like a bolt, for example, and he can, of course, will probably take care of the Savannah lines, I think. Take two damage less. Okay, so Nikolai is picking up his cards here, tapping the red. There's a bolt, taking care of the line, only taking two. Okay, that's good. He's definitely still in the race. Next turn, he's going to untap with four mana. There's a white knight. I mean, one Satch can make all the difference. For Nikolai. Then of course Duck can still attack with the 1-1 one, one flyer. But I mean. It would at least stop the White Knight and the Wolf. He's going to tap 4. What, what is he going to do for 4? Oh a Mind Twist for 3. Wow I haven't seen that yet here in the finals. Mind Twist. Look at that. Swords to Plowshares. Armageddon would have been really good here. Wow. That army of Allah was a bit too costly to, uh, to play. But again, for Nikolai, it's bad, you know, the twist. But not, I mean, for Doug, but not that bad. Because you're like, okay, I can now at least swing in for four. Going to put him on seven. That's exactly what he does. Like, I think if you're Nikolai, you're not, like, taking it easy. You're on seven. He needs to start to stabilize. Ooh, passing the turn. We didn't see a disenchant, by the way, in the in the hand of Duck. So he was really just bluffing to have that disenchant. So that was quite a, a good play. 
And of course, if you're Nikolai and you're already low on lands, you just don't want to take the risk, which I understand. He did have the swords, by the way. So I guess he did. He wasn't bluffing at all. He had the swords. So it was a good call from Nikolai not to uh, not to use the factory. But regardless, I wouldn't have taken the, the risk there at that position. But anyway, Nikolai now being on 7, Doug being on 20. So Doug with two cards in hand, he's got a decision to make. I mean, he could just attack for one, be on the safe side, put him on six, could also uh, decide to all attack separately. I mean, if you have a disenchant or a swords, then of course you're just gonna attack with all your creatures. You don't even have to think about it. But I think that Doug doesn't because he is really taking his time here. So I think he's deciding, am I going to sacrifice maybe my White Knight or my Tundra Wolves for some extra damage? Or do I want to attack in a band? I mean, I think if you don't have a removal spell, okay, so he's going to attack in a band here. Okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Okay, so he is going to animate. If Nikolai now has a bolt, that would be a big problem. Oh, look at that. So he's going to bolt first. Yes, he's going to bolt one of the creatures. He's going to kill the white knight while blocking. Yeah, this is a big problem here for Doug. Oh, oh, Doug, you're so close and yet so far away. Nikolai's still on seven. There's a COP red. I mean, the thing, COP red is nice and all, but it's not going to protect you from the red source dealing damage to your creature. There's a chain lightning. Oh, and now attacking for two. Wow, this game is turning around. Man, this is huge. This is a big problem for Doug. I think if you're Doug, you got to hope for a land text to start drawing at least, I know they're lands, but still. Okay, this is good. Preacher is quite useful. As soon as Nikolai animates next turn, you can start stealing it. Oh, there's a terror though. Wow, so much removal found by Nikolai and he's really getting back into this. And for Doug, it's looking really bad. He's in, in top deck mode. That COP red is not going to save him. At least he's got a high life total. There's a crusade useless on this board here. There's another fell. We're probably going to attack for two. Exactly. Going to put Doug here to 14. Oh, man, it was looking so good for Doug. But after the twist, things went downhill. I mean, I think losing, losing that Armageddon was just huge. If he would have found that, that land number four sooner, could have cast the Armageddon, it uh, would have been his game. At least he's able now to strip mine the, the factory, by the way. Here we see the uh, Disrupting Scepter. Okay, there's a threat and a really good threat as well. Order of Lightbur, pro black. So Nikolai now again needs something. A set stroll would be really good. But he really has to block this order. Remember, the order also gets a, a, a bonus from the Crusade. So it's a 3-2 at the moment. For two white, you can give a plus one, plus O. Oh. Ooh, there's an order of the Ebon Hand. That's not going to do it though. Black creatures cannot block creatures that have protection from white, so... Ooh, it's looking really good for Doug now all of a sudden. Man, this is a swingy game. So Doug can now attack, pump it up, could deal four points of damage. Or does he have a better option? Ooh, there's another Crusade! Wow! Attack for four here. That, that's now a 4-3 that you can get first strike for one white, and you can pump. That's huge. And Nikolai is on three, needs to find an answer. One lightning bolt. Oh, Pyrotechnics, that'll do it. Pyrotechnics found. That is huge here for Nikolai. And he's going to kill the order, of course. Going to deal a damage. That exactly, Duck, you can prevent it. So he preventing, he's preventing the damage. That's good magic. But now Nikolai can attack, of course, with his order. And Doug is going to drop to 12. Wow. I mean, that Pyrotechnics came just at the right time in this match. Oh, man. I mean, Doug was so close to winning it here. 
Is it all gonna fall apart? Okay, there's the uh, blacksmith, which is now a 3-4 and it's got protection from red. So you cannot kill it with direct damage. But of course he can block it on the order. Does he have enough mana for the order though? Okay, there's an hypnotic specter. Ooh, this could be interesting. I wonder if Doug is gonna attack. Let's first see what card he can get. If he can get an answer for the hippie, that would be ideal. Or of course for the uh, for the order, but it's gonna be it's gonna be impossible to draw an answer for the order. So I mean, if he attacks, Nikolai is forced to double block, and he can kill both creatures. But he is going to lose his blacksmith. I still think it's a good deal because next turn, if he untaps with enough mana. You know, he can he can pump up the order. Although he doesn't have enough black mana to pump it up to four and give it first strike. He can only pump it up to three and give it first strike. So yeah, this is an interesting position that Doug is finding himself in. I think from where I'm sitting right now and not knowing what card he has in hand, you know, because Doug has one card, of course, in hand there. I, I think I would attack with the blacksmith and make the trade. Because you're taking care of two creatures on the side of Nikolai, including a creature that's pro-white. Oh, of course, a pro-white. Ah, oh, I'm so stupid. He can just block with the pro-white creature. Okay, forget about it. I'm a little bit wishful thinking for Duck here. <laughs> because if you've got protection from white, duh, you don't take any damage from the blacksmith. So this is really tough for Nikolai. Actually, he cannot attack at all. Doesn't have a good attack. He's doing it, though. Yeah, exactly. Just to block. Yeah, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, it's kind of desperation mode here for for Nikolai uh, for uh, for Doug. But Doug's still on twelve. I mean, he's going to take five, dropped his seven. One card in hand. Looking at that one card, passing the turn, and, and remember, Nikolai has that uh, disrupting scepter, using it right now. Let's see what that one card was. Oh, an Armageddon. Oh man. This whole, this whole third game just couldn't get to land four to cast the Armageddon. And I mean, Nikolai's in a good position. Attacking here for two. I think this is a good play, keeping the uh, order, of course, on blocking duty. That is necessary, of course. So just attacking here with the uh, with Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, this is interesting. Although, the thing is with the factory, it's just a 2-2 two -two if you attack. And remember, Nikolai can give his order first strike. One, wait... Actually, it's quite interesting because he can attack with the blacksmith and the factory and then Nikolai has to block if he decides not to attack with the hippie. I mean, I think if you're Nikolai, you need to keep both creatures at bay here exactly until you draw another creature yourself or an answer to the factory or the blacksmith. So one card in hand again here. And I think for Nikolai, for, uh, for Doug... The Disrupting Scepter is going to be very annoying. Because let's say this is, for example, an army of Allah. You don't want to play that out now, but you also know that Nikolai has that Scepter, so it's going to force you to discard it next turn. And it's, it's, it's difficult. But what an exciting finals it is. And this is a very swingy match. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, just the planes. You could even consider keeping the planes in hand and then your opponent is going to force you to discard and you draw, throw away a planes, who cares? Then again, maybe he boarded in the Sarah Angels, I don't know. Then you want to have five mana for those. Anyway, tapping three, there's a Gloom. Not that relevant at the moment. I mean, I guess it does mean your COP red to activate takes three more. That could be annoying. But both players now in top decking mode, kind of keeping each other uh, hostage. There's an order. And I mean, this is huge, right? The more creatures Duck can get, the better. Like he's got three creatures on the board, which is one more than Nikolai. And remember, Nikolai is on three. So if next turn Duck would attack with everything, Nikolai would probably take the two damage 
from the Mishra's factory would go to one. Oh, he's going to attack here. What is he planning? He could pump it up. Could deal six points in total, but maybe this is desperation mode from Nikolai. Or does he have enough burn to kill him? That could be the case. Oh, he's got the burn. Yep, there's Disintegrate. He's got the burn. And of course, Doug here had to tap out. Or, well, he didn't have to, but he tapped out understandably so to play the order. Nikolai winning here with that Disintegrate. Wow, wow, wow. What an ex. This was a great finals. Thank you, guys, man. I had a lot of fun. I'm sorry for overanalyzing your place, but I just got excited. And also apologies to uh, to the listeners. I'm sure I made a few mistakes, but I'm just so into this. And I'm thinking, if you do this, if you do that, maybe if you use it so-and-so. Um, again, it's easy from my position, sitting here on a chair, looking at it. And even I'm making mistakes, not seeing that, of course, the blacksmith can be blocked by the order of the Evan Hand, having uh, protection there from, from white. So uh, that's easy peasy. Anyway, congratulations here to Nikolai for, uh, for winning with your uh, black and red trolls. I'm a little disappointed I didn't see Power Surge. Actually, I'm not disappointed. I love this match, but I would have loved to also see Power Surge in action. But um, anyway, great match. I think a great winner. Both great finalists. Really nice to see White Weenie again. Traditional deck in old school magic. And I would like to also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. If you've enjoyed it as much as I did, please leave a like, hit that thumbs up button, uh, share this on your socials and uh, leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, I also have my very own Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks and please consider becoming a patron because with your support, I can continue making these videos for you and now you can already become a patron for just $1. And one of the perks is that if you become a patron, your name will be mentioned at the end of every single video in the end scroll, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het was, ik het was, somba kazing.